700 <laughs> from this guy right here. Uh, you are 19, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, has been leading the battle against Louisiana's latest attack on evolution and science education. He's creating a national movement, which he's going to tell you about to advocate for science in public schools. His work is timely, especially in New Mexico. We are home to the Rio Grande Foundation, which is funded actually by the Koch brothers through the Heritage Foundation, who believes that uh, it's okay for charter schools taking public money to teach creationism because it's a free market. <laughs> so you should be able to take that money and do any darn thing you want to with it. And that's right out of his mouth. And I'll tell you, that's, that's kind of scary. Zach has appeared on Moyers and Company with Bill Moyers. I've been trying to get on that show for years, and he won't return my call. <laughs> He's also been on Bill Maher's show, Real Time. I watched that last night. I don't get any calls back from Bill either, so you know, good for you. He's all over YouTube. He's uh, schooling all comers on what science is and is not, and what belongs in science classrooms and not. My favorite Zach line is, among many, was in an interview in Church and State magazine right here, and he was asked, how did you happen to get involved in this battle? And Zach said, I kept waiting for the adults to step forward. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't. So it was up to me. Now, there's a lesson for everybody, okay? We shouldn't be waiting for somebody else to step up. Let's, let's get doing it. And uh, here you go, Zach. And it's great to, great to meet you. <laughs>
State Board of Education was originally implementing policies surrounding this law. They knew it was for, they knew it was for creationism, so they decided to ban creationism and intelligent design from the classrooms. That didn't work. The creationists got wind of that, managed to get that policy thrown out, managed to actually get the policy surrounding appealing to what materials were used so it was stacked against the students. <coughs> and now there's no defense against creationism being snuck in the classrooms in Louisiana. And so creationism is not science. It doesn't fit the scientific method. You can't test creationism. And if you could test it, these tests weren't, aren't repeatable. There's no, nothing falsifiable about creationism. It really it just doesn't fit the scientific method. And if we teach our kids creationism, it's going to harm them in more than just biology classes. Because by not understanding the scientific method and understanding the nature of science, they're going to really struggle with understanding what science at all. Because if, if we can throw out the scientific method for one thing, why is physics safe? Why is chemistry? Why do we trust any science if the scientific method doesn't apply to biology? And so it, it can harm students in all their future scientific endeavors. And it doesn't just threaten evolution. It threatens climate science. And in Louisiana, this is a really scary thought. As our coastline is rapidly vanishing, and we really are feeling the effects of climate change in my state. But this, this all threatens climate change. And it's not just Louisiana. Tennessee passed a copycat law based on our law. And in New Mexico, y'all luckily managed to get rid of it this year. But people like, I've got his name, um, uh, is Tom Anderson? Yeah, Tom Anderson. Anderson. He, he, sponsored, he sponsored some, and he'll probably sponsor more again, the way these things work. And so we're going to have to keep fighting this. And that's what I've been doing. For the last few years, I decided to take on the Louisiana Science Education Act. And so the first step was finding a mentor. I mentioned Dr. Dr. Barbara Furt before us earlier. And she's one of the foremost experts on creationism and intelligent design in the country. Was an expert witness of the Kids Miller trial, and instrumental in proving intelligent design. Was not science. And luckily for me, she lives about 25 minutes away from me in Livingston Parish, Louisiana, which is a local hotbed of creationism. Livingston Parish, by the way, in 2010, after this law was passed, this school board was quite clear about what it was for. This was for critical thinking and creationism. And they explained that they want someone with religious views in the science class to go teach creationism and science and teaching evolution. And they didn't want a lawsuit, but they were willing to stand up and take one for Jesus, is what they said. And so, so they, were, they were quite clear about what this law was for, what they wanted to do with it. Anyway, so I met with Barbara, and we got started on this repeal campaign. And the next step after that was to find a sponsor. And so there was good news and bad news with this. So the, when the Louisiana Science Education Act passed, it passed with only three votes against it in the entire Louisiana legislature. So we had, we had an uphill battle fighting this. The, the, the silver lining on that was we knew who to ask for a repeal bill. And there wasn't very many people to ask to really see where they stood. <laughs> so, the first person I went to was Senator Karen Carter Peterson. And she was one of the few folks against this bill. And I sat down to meet with her and I started explaining, this is wrong, this is not science. And she cut me off and said, you don't have to tell me this. I know it's wrong. When do we get started? And we went from there. And so the first year, everyone told us, you're going up against the governor. You're going against the entire Louisiana legislature. Look at the margin they voted against you. Why are you even trying? And we got the Senate Education Committee, and I'm going to show you a video about what happened. Uh, the reason we lost it, we lost 5 and 1 that first year, and large part due to Senator Julie Quinn. I think this is on Firefox. Yeah. So that should bring up, just click there, and uh, here we go. There it is. Well, it, or it's coming up at least. Oh, it's probably got some loading. Screw. There we are. Yeah. I'm going to show you all the years of exciting stuff they've done in Louisiana. Okay, click it one more time. There you go. So, yes, this one. This is Senator Julie Quinn. She, you can tell how much respect she has for scientists by uh, the fact that she thinks they're just people with little letters behind the name. <laughs> so, and in large part, she led the charge against us, and we lost five one that year. It's so, like. And tell me, hopefully, it go well. I think, I think most of the kids here would like to stand for us if you would ask. Would you prefer to It wasn't what I asked. I, I and I am an attorney, and I listen patiently to all the accolades that everyone has behind all the little letters behind their name, doctor, etc. So, as an attorney, I'm asking a question, and I would like an answer to that question. 
do you support, since you came to the table, do you support a law that prohibits the teaching of religion in the classroom? Not in classes like English or history or comparative religions or philosophy class. So you support the promotion of religion in an English class? And the Bible is always used in most English classes because it's a classic piece of literature. Okay. And promotion would be the key word in response. Yeah. yeah. Promotion would be, I'm just if I can respond, I did listen patiently and I appreciate that, Sarah, but the only point I was trying to make is that if you wanted a response to your question, somebody needed to come to the mic so it could be on the record what the response was. And I don't think that any one individual, even Mr. Copeland, can speak for everyone in the audience. And that probably That's kind of why I was, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, after listening to everyone, it was it seemed pretty clear that what they were espousing, the original concept, was what they consider religious references based on to, as to creationism not being right. taught in the classroom. So I was rephrasing it. Then, do you support the bill that prohibits the promotion, the teaching of religious beliefs in the classroom? And then, oh, and then they would even answer that. Well, they weren't at my table number one, but I don't think that. I mean, the instrument before us in Bill 7 deals specifically with creationism and science classes, and that's why you see the plethora of people with little letters, little letters behind their name. Letters, <laughs> I'm trying to be well, just heard little letters. I'm respectful, and I'm very respectful of four, over 40 Nobel laureates. I'm very respectful of the Association of Biology Teachers. I'm very respectful of the Louisiana Association of Biology Educators. I'm very respectful of the Louisiana Science Teachers Association. I'm very respectful of the American Association of Advancement of Science, and I'm res respectful of the American Institute of Biological Sciences, as well as American Society for Cell Biology and the Society for Vertebrate Paleontology. Lastly, the American Association of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Half of this stuff I can't even enunciate, and yes, they have little, big, medium, and big letters behind their names, and they're all <laughs> suggesting that we would kill the act. So that was that was Senator Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> so the good news is we have all with the that. The second year we only lost two to one. <laughs> which is a positive benefit. But the legislators in Louisiana evolved from doubting people with little letters behind their names to just blatantly doubting evolution. And so the next star is Senator Mike Walsworth, who I've got two videos from him to play. And this is one of my favorites. Let me ask you a question. There's not an experiment that you could could Yes, there is and, an experiment. And the classroom that would say he compares Darwin's theory of evolution and it proves it without a yes, shadow of a doubt. I will tell you about that. They have done experiments with E. coli bacteria. And they have they have taken those E. coli and they have taken uh, different containers of them and they froze them in time. So that... Um, How long did it Uh-huh. How long? They just froze them over generations of years. Oh, okay. But this is an experiment. Okay. And so then they let the, the E. coli that are in the different vials continue to evolve. Okay. And then they take this group and they freeze it. And then they take this group and they freeze it. And then you can take all of them over time and compare them. And you can see how the E. coli have changed over time and how they evolved. But what's really they interesting... They evolved into a person? How to get there? I'm just trying to figure out how to get there. But go ahead. I mean, so they change. I'm just. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, go ahead. I'm just trying to find out. They have to go through a monkey stage first, don't they? So it became clear what we were talking about. He's already here. Because we later learned you didn't know what a molecule was. <laughs> well, he told us the next year he did never. They just skipped his class. The first, yeah. um, I guess, first sentence. Darwin's theory of evolution is a theory in crisis in light of the tremendous advances we've made in molecular. Well, thank you, thank you. Biology, biochemistry, and genetics over the past 50 years. Well, I think you just, you, I just think you proved the point that you can't trust what you get over the internet.
cut the ribbon on uh, Wikipedia beforehand. Uh, and the next year, we, we got three votes, or we got two votes and lost three to two. So the best we've got, we pulled some more legislators on our side. But we moved on also to doubting not just evolution, but just modern medicine altogether. And, and this was this might might be the most astounding one to sit through yet. It's quite an experience to sit through all of these just in the room. Oh, we'll put these in the beat because I can destroy my history. <laughs> your your lecture here is uh, oh, sorry. which stuff. <laughs> Presentation of, of ideas uh, by we have to continually yeah. declaring one science or another science as, as pseudoscience. This doctor uh, practiced in an uh, open circle in a dusty spot. He wore those shoes, was semi-clothed, uh, used a lot of bones that he threw around. I would, I would bet that all of us would agree that his science is a pseudoscience. We would not have respect for his science and the practice of his science. That would concern me because if we were able to declare what I have verified for myself is something that has some validity to it. The stuff the man told me about my history. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if, if I closed my mind when I saw this man in the dust throwing some bones on the ground, semi clothed if I had closed him off and just said, that's not science. I'm not going to see this doctor. Uh, I would have shut off a very good experience for myself and actually would not have discovered some things that he told me about what I needed to go and do when I got home to see my doctor. Wow. <laughs> so I believe some good stuff. Apparently, this is apparently the supplemental materials we need in Louisiana science classrooms. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. I think it's very sincere. Why can't you keep it out of science class? Exactly. And so, despite this pushback from the Louisiana legislature, we've made some amazing progress, at least in building our coalition. We've got 78 Nobel laureates, major science organizations, thousands of clergy members, of teachers, and just tens of thousands of citizens from around the country who told the Louisiana legislature to repeal this law. And we are making some progress. But despite the, uh, the progress we're making, we've had another bad term. You would think that Governor Jindal, with signing creationism law, would have done all he could do to damage science education in Louisiana, right? Yeah, we, we were totally wrong. Because last spring, he created the school voucher program, which I didn't really know much about school vouchers at the time. I, I, haven't really, I hadn't been involved in that kind of education policy until that summer information came out that there were schools in the program that were using the curriculum that said the Loch Ness Monster is real, it disproves evolution, and also <laughs> dragons are real, they are dinosaurs that live with humans and breathe fire through glands in their nose, and these schools are receiving money from, from the state. And at first it came out, it just seemed like one school was doing this. But it caught my attention. I said, well, I'm going to do a little bit more research on these schools that are now slated for public money. And about 20 schools, now more since they've expanded the program in Louisiana, are teaching creationism and blatantly advertising it on their website. There were schools, my favorite was one that called, they called scientists sinful men. And yeah, that's what we should be teaching our kids about science. Scientists are sinful men. And there was another one that, uh, that explained in their handbook that students would be required to defend creationism against traditional scientific theory. Because we don't want traditional scientific theory in our classrooms. And these schools were originally slated for about 11 million in public money. After the outcry about what they were teaching came out and other problems like they didn't meet fire code and didn't have classrooms and didn't know how to spell scholarship and were run by felons and things like <laughs> that, that, those kind of things, they got decreased about 4 million. And the first
first year, four million annually. It's increased again now that they've expanded the program. And these are just the schools that were blatantly advertising on their website that we use curriculums that teach this, or that scientists are simple men. And so there's probably that that was just the tip of the iceberg in Louisiana. There's probably a lot more. And this is just a Louisiana problem. We were unfortunate that we got hit with a bad publicity. But there are other programs, there's 10 states and DC doing these programs that we've uh, now documented over 300 of these schools receiving probably about 100 million plus in public money that are teaching creationism. One of the schools in Florida calls Evolution the Way of the Heathen. And that, that's, another, that's another fun one. And so we've documented these schools, and it's all across the country. There are schools in Indiana that take their kids to the border of Kentucky to visit the Creation Museum. Mm -hmm. And so, honestly, it's a little bit worse than what we're doing in Louisiana. Although, I think these schools would be doing it at the Creation Museum were in easy reach. <laughs> and so, so again, we thought, we thought it could get worse until Governor Jindal signed this law to create a voucher program, and they've defended it ever since. And in all honesty, there's a provision of the Louisiana Constitution that bars these schools from teaching this, and they've just ignored that. And so, so despite all this work we've done in Louisiana, it's really been an uphill battle. And everyone keeps asking us why we do this. Why we still fight when, when it's just, you're, you're fighting against anti-science politicians who don't believe, who think that equal rights are people and want which socks in the classroom. That's honestly what we're up against. So why are we, ha why are we fighting this fight? when it just seems not a battle, why don't we write off Louisiana's lost cause? And really, Louisiana, in my mind, is ground zero of a much larger fight for science in America. And it's a fight over evolution. It's a fight over climate change. It's also a fight over science funding. The uh, Congress just cut about 50 billion from science funding in the next five years, and about 80, 80 billion over the next 10, which is just a devastating amount. It's, it's unbelievable that this is still standing, and we're actually in environment reverse part of that as soon as we can. And so, but we fight this fight because we need a science, scientific revolution. And one of my favorite quotes comes from President Kennedy explaining why we do things even if they're hard. It was when he launched our first scientific revolution when we went to the moon. He said, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, and because that challenge is one we are willing to accept, when we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win. It really sums up exactly what we need to do. We need to have a scientific revolution. We need to start funding more science. We need to actually be teaching our kids that evolution is real, that climate change is happening, and that the scientists can be trusted and not, not simple men. And if we don't, we really have a choice of two futures ahead of us where there are real threats we face that we can solve with science. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about superbugs recently that are resistant to our antibiotics. If we don't believe in evolution, we're going to have a lot of trouble combating that. Even, even just if we don't fund science, there was that recent meteorite that exploded over Russia, and we, we can face killer asteroids in the future if we don't take threats to prevent, or take, sorry, take steps, not threats, to prevent it. And, so there really, there's really a problem if we don't educate our students about science and if we don't fund science. On the other hand, if we do fund science, the magical thing about science is when we discover something, we'll have that research forever. It's not like a, like paving a road is a good investment, but we have to repave that road eventually. Uh, but when you, when you invest in science, it'll be with us forever. It's actually it's one of the best investments we can make, not just on the fact that it will pay itself off. There, there was recently an analysis done on the Human Genome Project where it looks even better than the president had been talking about with $140 to one that we spent. So we spent about $14.5 billion on the, pro on the project itself. The government got back about $60 billion in increased tax revenue that was generated. So the government pays itself off four times from that. On top of that, we've generated nearly a trillion dollars of increased economic activity from $14.5 billion spent. So if, if I'm a student, I take a loan to go to college because it's an investment I expect itself to, to pay itself back. If I'm starting a business, I take a loan out to start the business because I expect it to pay itself back. When we invest in science, we expect it to pay itself back. And so if we actually want to solve long-term problems in America like the debt, we should actually be spending more on science because it's a smart investment that will over the long term pay itself off and much more. And so that's that's really where I think we need to go. And that's what I'm calling for right now. I'm calling for a second giant leap for humankind is the movement that I'm working on right now, and it's calling for a
phase your reinvestment in science funding. I want to see a trillion dollars of new science funding over the long term. We're starting small, just trying to reverse the sequester now. But I want, but there's no reason we shouldn't have a mandatory minimum spending on science funding that we shouldn't be putting huge amounts of money into science. And I want to see an end to legislation like that in Louisiana, where it allows creations and time to in the classroom. I want to see an end to what's happening with the Texas State Board of Education, where the controversy of over evolution is being stuck to the textbooks, and that affects textbooks across the country. And that's what I'm fighting for. I hope you'll all join me and keep up the great work that y'all have been doing, stemming the, this, this foolishness in New Mexico. And thank y'all so much for being here and having me here. It's great to talk to y'all. Yes. And now probably it's probably close to fifteen thousand. 